So for sound to be recorded uh, and stored on a computer, it has to be sampled. And the problem is that sound is an analog wave. But the analog um, gets converted into a digital data so that computers can store it. Because obviously computers can only store digital in zeros or ones. So the process of converting an analog wave or an analog entity to digital is called sampling. So let's think about sound as an analog wave. And we'll use this slinky as an example. Is the wave is constantly changing at different heights. It's not fixed. It's not on or off. It's up and down. So it's all over the place. Sometimes it goes really, really high and sometimes it's really, really low. That analog wave has to be stored in a format of zeros and ones. So I use this blue wire, red wire even, to uh, illustrate the point that the sound wave is constantly changing. It's moving up and down. It's not fixed. So what you need to take from this is that the red line or our sound wave is an analog wave and it keeps changing and it is continuous. It doesn't stop or start. It's always going up and down. And it's very smooth. So if you see this line going through, you can see that there's a smooth transition from point 0.1 all the way to point 0.5. We'll come to that in a minute. So, computers can only store digital values. So what we have to do is sample. So as these blue crosses point out that um, we convert an analog recording to digital data by sampling the amplitude of the wave at regular intervals. So in this one, it's every, let's say, one second along the bottom. Every one second, we take a reading of the amplitude of the wave. How high is the wave at that particular point? And we just record that point. So we've set up our microphone, we've recorded our analog wave, and then what happens next? Once the device has sampled the recording, it creates a curve digitally like this. Now the top right hand corner shows you the analog wave. And remember we marked the points at certain amplitude and we worked out what those readings were. But the computer recreates this digitally. But as you can see, the, the green column chart at the bottom, or our digital wave, isn't continuous. Then the data gets lost. If we compare the one on the right to the one on the left, the, there's a smoother line going from point 0.1 to point 0.5, whereas on the digital one it seems to go up like a staircase and you're losing that data. So that data could be a little tiny bit of someone's voice or a little bit of a guitar. And there's an argument that that doesn't really matter, but it's the same argument with vinyl in the sense that vinyl is meant to be better because it records in an analog thing. A, a, um, a record is an analog disc opposed to an mp3 player which is digital. So the more samples we take, the, the higher the quality. It would be the same as if we were counting cars outside school. If we were counting you know, the cars in an hour, that might give us one result. But if we counted them all day, we'd get a better idea of the traffic outside the school. So the more samples, um, the higher the quality. And the last thing to notice is that the, the peak gets flatter. If you look, it isn't, um, it isn't kind of pointy or like the, the right one. The one on the left is a lot flatter. So what affects the size and quality of sounds? Sampling interval, sampling frequency, the sample size and bit rate. So let's have a look at them. The sampling interval, like we talked about before, is how long are you leaving it before you take a sample? Are you leaving it one second, ten seconds, one minute? The closer those samples are to get together, the, uh, the better the quality is going to be. The sampling frequency is the, the sample rate. So how many samples are being taken a second? So how many, how many are you measuring at a certain amount of time? It's like, let's say you're looking at the traffic on the motorway. Are you just looking at one lane or are you looking at all three lanes? The sample size. The number of bits available for the sample. If you're trying to store everything in two bits, then the quality isn't going to be very good. If you're storing it in 4 bits or a nibble, you're going to have more space to play with okay? because you can store more values. It's the same as colours. If you're trying to make a picture using only one bit, that's only black or white. If you're doing a 2-bit, then you can store like 4 colours. So the more bits you've got, 
the more sample you can save. And the bit rate, the number of bits used per second of audio. Bit rate equals the sampling frequency times the sample size. So how many samples are being taken in a second by what they're being saved in, how many bits are being used to save that data. But obviously there's pros and cons with that. So if we increase the sampling frequency, the samples taken more often from the analog um, closer to the original, that will make it better. Okay, the more samples we take, the better it will be. However, like anything in computing, the more samples we take, the more space we're going to need to store it. If we increase our bit rate, we're going to have more size to save it in, and that's going to have a knock-on effect. So quality affects storage. We can store a lot of really bad audio, but really good audio would have to take up a lot of space. So you need to think about how much space you've got. But the key thing to take away from here is the bit rate equals sampling frequency times sampling size.